Eat the oh, Jesus Christ. That? Ah. You don't know what you're up against. The whole place is coming down. That's a pretty damn good idea. So with a one-shot demo for the new Resident Evil 2 just released, we were treated some hands-on experience with this game, and was also showcased a brand new trailer, giving us Resident Evil fans more details that's inside the game, amplifying the already huge hype that surrounds this title. Anyways, what is up you guys, this is Adeva, and in this video we'll delve in and break down some of the details that we've seen in the new Resident Evil 2 demo and gameplay trailer, covering aspects like the overall gameplay and feel while playing as Leon Kennedy in the RPD, to his overall environment and feel against the countless hordes of zombies that lurk inside the police station. But we'll also analyze some of the new clips from the demo trailer and how the events from the new remake compares to the original Resident Evil 2. So let's start off first with a gameplay demo, where it has us playing as Leon in the early stages in the RPD station. As we traverse through both the inside and outside of the police station, we can only marvel at the amazing graphics as this game has shown, taking full advantage of the new RE engine. Anyways, I intentionally wanted to explore the outside for a brief moment, seeing how it compares to the original Resident Evil 2. As we see zombies trying to get through the main gate, I wasn't able to get the full range of the environment of the outside of the RPD station, because I was trying to see if I could somehow go through the underground tunnel where we find Zombie Brad from the original Resident Evil 2. Also, I wanted to see the area as to where we'll see Nemesis ambush both Jill and Brad in the new Resident Evil 3 remake, if they do make it. Also on a quick side note, there was an image of Brad recruiting for stars, so at least we get our first look at the unfortunate stars member. But as we walk back into the RPD's main hall, we get a little new details and layouts that is much different compared to its older predecessor. But as we head to the east side corridor, we can already see the difference in both the look and layout, from the electronically secured door, to the pitch dark environment, and the massive amounts of gore and chaos that surrounds the area. Also with the added features of the flooded floors, to his blood stained walls, Capcom has it held back in giving us Resident Evil fans the perfect atmosphere for a true survival horror title. As we move forward through the east side hall, we can already see the many additions and changes in the layout that they've done for this game. From the conference room to the reception desk where we see another officer mutilated by the zombie that lurks in the RPD station. Please! Come here, help me! I got you. But as we immerse ourselves in the amazing and claustrophobic environments of this demo, we can truly appreciate the details that they added to this game. Anyways, this environmental style would be the same as we traverse through the other areas of the RPD station as well, where we're put in a darkened environment, trying to make way to the next area to explore. So it makes me wonder if we could somehow get some electricity going, so that we can provide some light in some portions of the game so that we can see better. Anyways, the next aspect I wanted to cover was the in-game combat mechanics that we get to play, where we play from the over-the-shoulder aspect, where now we're able to shoot the zombies and a variety of ways that would either incapacitate them or kill them depending on where we shoot them. Also, the overall feel of shooting these zombies really doesn't make you feel very powerful against them, which is a good thing, because Capcom is really emphasizing the survival horror aspect of this new RE2 remake by limiting the effectiveness of our weapons to placing us in a cramped and darkened environments and to the overall combat style while facing these zombies in the RPD station. Anyways, I can't emphasize enough how amazing the details in this game is, just the overall aesthetic and gore that we get to see when we either shoot the zombies, or the beautifully disgusting environments and blood-stained walls of the RPD station really makes this demo stand out. Anyways, what do you guys think of the demo, and what was your favorite portion of the game so far? Please let me know in the comment section down below, I'd love to hear your guys' experience so far with this new remake. Alright, so let's finally move on to the one-shot gameplay trailer, and see what new aspects that they've showcased to us RE fans this time. So the trailer starts off with several clips that we've already seen from the other trailers, ranging from Ada Wong and her interactions with both Leon and Annette Birkin, to the snippet of Claire in the RPD's underground parking lot. But the new footages are then revealed when we get our first face-to-face -face look at the giant alligator, chasing after Leon in the tunnel-like environment of the sewers, where we see Leon traversing through the water, which makes me wonder if that would hamper our movement if we do fight this boss in this setting. Anyways, we can compare this portion of the clip to the original Resident Evil 2's version, where we were put in a similar tunnel-like environment, but this time Time, we're not surrounded by water or darkness. Uh. 
Also, we have the option to one-shot the giant alligator in the original Resident Evil 2, where we're able to drop a bomb in front of the giant alligator and shoot the creature once once he gets a hold of it. So it makes me wonder if we could somehow do a similar strategy when fighting against this giant alligator in the new Resident Evil 2 remake, because the last thing I want is to get cornered by this monster, then this happens. Anyway, the trailer moves on with more of the Claire Redfield vs. Chief Irons interaction, leaving our protagonist bloodied after getting hit by the psycho chief of police. I'll get you, you fucker! The next scene we get is a quick snippet of Ada running away from the giant crane that Annette uses, but I like how Capcom mixes this portion of the game with the later events that'll happen in the Umbrella Secret Lab, because we were able to see Ada fall in the sewer disposal area, where we see her tumble down and get impaled in her thigh by an object. But instead, we get a quick transition of Leon trying to save her from falling down in the Umbrella Secret Lab, which is very reminiscent of the original Resident Evil 2. But this time, I don't see any signs of wounds that she acquired from William nor the gunshot wound that Annette gave her as well. So moving on to the next scene, we get a quick snapshot of William yelling at someone, which I assume that this was a portion of the game that the Umbrella operatives try to steal the G-Virus sample from him. But as we look closer at William, we can already tell the effects of the G-Virus is already starting, with the darkened spots that cover the good portion of his neck. Anyway, the very next scene, we see both Mr. X and Leon go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other, but if we observe a little closer at the tyrant, we can clearly see the mini antenna that's protruding on his left side of temple area. But I'm not sure if this will play any kind of significance with our interactions with this tyrant during our playthrough. I guess we just have to wait and see. But the very next clip we get is probably my favorite out of the whole trailer, seeing our protagonist go against William Birkin in the train, and seeing him in his later transformation. As we can see William in this new remake, that there's this massive G eyeball that's surrounded by the many sharp teeth of this G mutated monster. Where we compare this to the original, where the G eyeball is absent in the middle portion of this monster. Also in the remix version, we can see that the G monster appears to fester his body throughout the walls of the train, giving a sickening look to the surroundings. So then the trailer moves on and we see a young Sherry Birkin looking completely sick after being infected with a G virus, giving her a pale appearance while having what looks like bloodshot eyes. But this of course was absent in the original version, where we see her just unconscious due to the infection. Anyway, with the trailer almost done, we finally get some other clips of Leon in the Umbrella Secret Lab, talking to Claire over the monitor. We can compare and contrast this moment with the original Resident Evil 2, but also with this small event, it makes me think we're going to be playing on Leon Scenario A and Claire on Scenario B. But with the final clip I want to break down was a quick glimpse of William Bergen in his later stages of his G transfer. Transformation. Seeing him in this new RE engine is something else, as we look at his four enlarged arms with claws and that G-mutated eyeball that he sports as well. Also, I noticed with this version of William, he has smaller eyeballs are hidden behind his ribcage area, which wasn't there in the original version. This could be the reason as to why we saw his final form have the one large G eyeball in the middle of his body. Anyways, overall, this one-shot Resident Evil 2 gameplay demo and trailer was great. Getting the feel of the hands-on in-game battle mechanics that this game provides was fun, but also gave us a powerlessness feel that we've been clamoring for from a survival horror game. Also, seeing the trailer showcase several new clips of info and gameplay really was a great treat for us as well. And oh, by the way, let's not forget about the quick cameo of both the infamous Hunk and the Tofu Survivor, where I suspect that we can play as these characters like we did from the original Resident Evil 2. Anyways, what do you guys think of the new Resident Evil 2 remake demo and trailer overall? Please feel free to share your thoughts on the comment section down below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my quick analysis and breakdown of this one-shot demo and trailer. As always, you guys have a great rest of your day, and this is Hey Deva signing out.